Hello, I'm Dr. Anna Dale from Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. In a previous video, I described my efforts to research and chase down the origin of a legend that Albert the Great built a robot or automaton and Thomas Aquinas smashed it. That search took me as far as a mid-19th century work in German. I've recently made a breakthrough in the search, and I'd like to update you on what I've found. I owe this breakthrough to Mary Moritz and a post that she put on Facebook in the Thomism discussion group. She posted a link to a blog post she had written for the Science Meets Faith blog, titled Albertus Magnus as Scientist. In this post, which is linked in the description below, Moritz cites two sources which I had not seen before. The first is a book titled St. Thomas Aquinas and Medieval Philosophy by the Dominican D.J. Kennedy. It was published in 1919. Here's what Kennedy writes. Another legend relates to an automaton that he labored 30 years to produce, which he succeeded in making to speak. St. Thomas, the legend says, came unawares upon it in the workshop of Albert, and was so startled that he seized a stick, and shrieking salve, salve, smashed the fearful monster to pieces, thinking it to be some cruel savage who was about to attempt his life. The truth is this. Albert could manufacture automata, which were made to move by means of mercury, after the manner of Chinese mannequins and tumbling toys, and it is possible that he may have constructed small mechanical figures capable of emitting sounds, for he speaks of these inventions as things then known. The barbiton, he says, is a figure with a long beard, from the mouth of which comes a tube with a bellows attached to one side. It is set in motion by the introduction of air into the tube, so that the bearded mannequin appears to play the flute. Albert probably manufactured an automaton of this kind, capable of moving and uttering the word salve, so that the legend about St. Thomas's vigorous application of the stick is founded upon a historical fact. Now, Kennedy does not give a source for this story, but for other stories in the same section, he cites Sigurd, who was my 19th century German source. I think that's probably where he got this from, including some details. The other source that Moritz mentions is a book by Ephraim Chambers, who died in 1740, titled A Supplement to Mr. Chambers' Cyclopedia or Universal Dictionary. It contains an entry on Androides. Here's what it says. Androides. Authors sometimes speak of brazen heads made under certain constellations, capable not only of speaking, but of prophesying and rendering oracles. Henry de Villan, Virgil, Pope Sylvester, Robert of Lincoln, and Roger Bacon are said to have had such figures. Albertus Magnus, it is pretended, went further. He made a complete man, or androides, after this manner. In a course of thirty years' continual operation, by taking the benefit of an infinite number of different constellations and aspects which presented themselves in that time, for instance, the eyes were made when the sun was in a sign of the zodiac, which bore an analogy to that part, and the like of the rest. It is generally said to have been composed of a mixture of diverse metals, though some will have it to have been made of flesh and bones. It was burnt by Thomas Aquinas. This Androides, it seems, solved all problems and cleared up all difficulties for its author. We are even to suppose that a great part of the 29 volumes in folio which this author produced are composed of the dictates, or inspired by, the Androides. Chambers cites a couple of sources, and one of his sources is Pierre Bale's Historical and Critical Dictionary. Bale died in 1706. The dictionary was first published in 1697. Here's what Bale has to say in his entry on Albert. It has been said that he was a notorious magician, and that he had made a machine like a man which served him for an oracle, and explained all the difficulties that he proposed to it. I could easily believe that, as he understood the mathematics, he had made a head, the springs whereof might form some articulate sounds, 
But what a folly to ground an accusation of magic upon this. Bale includes a footnote, which I don't currently have a legible copy of. Bale also cites another author. I have a copy of the other author, Naud, in both French and English translation, but I haven't had a chance to work with it yet. I'll report on those in a later video. But that's as far back as I've gotten. Pierre Bale in his histor historical critical dictionary does have some mention of this legend of Albert the Great's uh, robot or automaton. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.